Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are going to continue on this. This is step three in this three step process of making a butchering tool for chasing. So if you haven't seen the other two videos on this topic, I will link, link them up here in the cards and in the description down below. Make sure you check out those videos. I went over the forging of the tool steel for this and the actual grinding of the bevel of this tool. And so today we are gonna work on doing the hardening and tempering step. So I've got the coal forge lit here. Let's get in a little bit closer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we are, the most crucial step of this whole journey here. Uh, I'm right by the microphone so I will try to take and talk a little softer. But basically what we are going to do is we're gonna take the struck end Bring out Mr. Thing here. We're going to take the struck end of the tool and it is going to get heated up first. We want to bring here to the center up to critical first. The reason for this is we want to protect this thin edge. We do not want to overheat this edge and get enlarged grain growth along the edge. We don't want that to happen because that's going to allow chipping at a later date. So we want to just tuck that right down in there. I've got a very tightly packed fire and we're going to bring this up slowly. At any time that you're doing anything with your butcher tools, slitting chisels, punches, drifts, anything that you are hardening, tempering, or otherwise forging out of a high carbon tool steel, you need to make sure that you do everything slowly. Do not get in the habit of bringing it up to temp too quickly. So hopefully that'll make sense to you. So basically, I'm going to cut out and I'll get, I'll come back as soon as this back end is up to a critical temperature. Now, there is a lot of debate on what is critical temperature. And for different steels, it's always a different color temperature. It's not always the same. My method for figuring this out is usually done with a magnet. Now, you can magnetism will lose at a probably a good dark a good dark orange to bright orange color you'll lose magnetism on most steels but the way that I factor in is I find where I lose critical temperature and where it drops back to so I bring it up to a high temperature where I'm way past what critical temperature would be and then I let it drop back until it just starts to pull magnetism. And I usually pick a point that is either right at that point of where it just starts to grab magnetism or beyond. Now this is my method that I've used for the last decade. Uh, do what suits yourself. If you have proper heat treating equipment like an even heat and things like that, go ahead and use that to bring stuff to an exact temperature. As this is being automotive coil spring, and I don't know the specific thing that we're working with here, uh, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to use my KISS method of keep it simple smithy, and we're going to bring this up to heat. So I'll be right back with you once the thick part gets up to temperature. It's been a little while, and now we have that center section up to a full temp or what I know to be mostly a critical temperature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab it very carefully here, and I've got a little magnet here just on a piece of scrap steel, and I'm going to check it to see if it sticks. And it shouldn't stick, they're just stuck on the pretty much the tongs, but basically that is non-magnetic at that point. This, you can go ahead and quench it, quench it, it's probably just a little high for this steel, but at this point, we're gonna go ahead and flip it around, and now we're gonna put the struck end in. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to lay this in at a bit of a 45 degree angle on the fire, keeping the tip from going down in the fire. We want the tip to be up or the thinnest portion and let that heat now radiate all the way up to the tip of the tool. Once this is up to full temperature, the whole thing is up to one critical temperature, we are going to quench it in water. So I'm going to bring it over to the I'm going to bring it over to the slack tub and I'm going to show you how we're actually going to quench that. So let's go over to the slack tub and just do a real quick practice run through so you can see what happens. 
Okay, so here we are at my slat tub, and here's just a simple rod of steel. I'm going to run you through this process. So basically, we are going to heat up, again, our butcher tool to a critical temperature, or a non-magnetic state. We will then bring it over to the slat tub, and we will quench the tip first, the cutting end first, and swirl it around a bit. Not a bunch, just a little bit, okay? And before the rear end of the tool, or the struck end of the tool, cools down below that non-magnetic and becomes magnetic again, we're going to flip it and quench just that end of the tool, leaving the center still hot. We're going to make those two ends quenched first, okay? And then what we're going to do is I will rub it with a piece of sandpaper on those ends, and I will let the heat radiate from the center out to both ends to draw it to a straw color all in one heat. This is incredibly important to take and do this if you're trying to do a one heat quench. Now, if you want to simplify this, the easiest way is to heat the whole piece up and then just quench it into the slat tub and do the heat treat or do the drawing of the temper in a second step. But I'm going to do a one step method here. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this, but we will get this because it's almost up to temp. We will do this one step method here. The advantage of doing this one step method is it leaves both my ends hard. It leaves both my ends hard, both the struck end and the cutting end. And I do that so this way I can hit my hardened end with a soft base hammer and it doesn't deform in the struck end, you know, obviously the cutting end does its job. And so therefore all I have to do is replace one tool versus multiple tools. And that is Tom Latney's theory on it and I like that theory quite well myself. So that's the way I do my chasing tools. So I'll bring this out and we will go in for the quench and I'll be right back with you as soon as it's hot. All right, so there you are. There's a hardened and tempered and one step tool. Now, I will go more in detail and more in depth on this method as we progress through the series on making your own, uh, your own engraving or your own chasing chisels and things like that. I've got five different things that I'm wanting to do and showcase that'll get you a real simple set of chasing tools basically. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did or if you have questions or anything like that about the methods and stuff shown in here, drop them in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. It may take me some time or I might just do a video reply. Uh, that is a common thing for me to do. But basically this tool has been hardened throughout. It's uh, mostly hardened on this end and then this end and then this end is left pretty much uh, it's tougher it has been hardened to a degree but not as high as the others because it's lost critical temperature by the time you get around to doing these but you can see and I'll hopefully get it in the next video in this series when I do the other tools I'll show you how this has got a nice little bronze color right here at the edge and that's what we're looking for I'm not concerning myself with the hitting end so much as it's a thicker piece, so it probably went to maybe like a purple uh, color or something like that, which is okay. It'll still be hard enough now that you can strike it with a hammer, and it won't do as much deforming. So that's it for this uh, three-step process on doing a butcher tool. 
Make sure to watch, come back and watch the rest of the series. Uh, subscribe if that's something you're into, if you like this kind of video and you like these sort of things. And uh, we'll get around to doing some chasing projects in the future. So that's it for this video. God bless you all. And like I always say, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.